Hello, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm Nikki Wallman. Danny Shawkin's art expresses a vision of material and spiritual energy as he attempts to communicate the ineffable via the energetic flow of the Holy Hebrew Letters. Danny's art deals with his spirituality, religion and philosophy through an explosion of bright and expressive colors, bridging the matter of paint with the ethereal realms of intellect and spirit. I think art is a way of finding appropriate form and the use of matter in, in such a way that you translate what is really an ethereal idea into something tangible. So the fact that you can bring something which is philosophical in scope or, or um, immaterial and find a form for it is, is a wonderful um, way of, of uniting mind, heart, and gut or body in, within one object. So insofar as there's a world to form, if you like, art is, is that medium which allows me to instantiate something which would otherwise remain quite nebulous and, and ill-defined. After one is uh, painting or drawing for some time, one enters um, one becomes in the zone. All sense of time is totally obliterated and, and one is fed into this other realm and you're transported to a different dimension. This is not going to happen every time, but generally uh, what it does is it allows for altered states of consciousness and, and, and rigorous defining and, and, and self-concept is lost in this um, other world, you know, where, whereby you you, you actually, you might have a, a, a design beforehand, but, but what re invariably happens is that you lose that and things just start to happen. And that's why it's important to work with materials. The materials, you know, have a life of their own and rather than simply dutifully paint a pretty picture based on a specific design, you allow things to happen. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not about simply dictating this is what I'm going to paint and this is how I'm going to paint it because I think technique is, is secondary or to the, to the intent and that, that sense of, um, of, of movement and energy as opposed to simply um, illustration. So the, the materials are important in, in actually um, galvanizing your energies and, and allowing um, a certain uh, feel and, and, and uh, instinctual quality to come across rather than simply uh, a, a preconceived uh, image. These uh, series of, of works um, looks at the Hebrew letters from Aleph to Taf, because the idea with Hebrew, Lashon HaKodesh, the holy language, is that as opposed to other languages which are decided by convention, i.e. a cat could have been the word dog, a C could have looked like a D, there's this notion in Kabbalah that each letter, in fact, can only be that specific form, and that form reflects a certain divine influx. The name, likewise, the sound, and its number, the gematra, the, each letter is associated with a specific number. So, for example, we come to the letter Aleph, and the Aleph means gematra, the number is one, and there's a sense of unity within the circle's form. Then the, the unity within, through the, the bond of male and female, with these simple stick figure calligraphic images, and the first letter of the Ten Commandments, Alufa Shel Olam, um, refers to the fact of God's existence, which, which is the first philosophical principle. And that is in, expressed within the Ten Commandments with, the, with these two horns on either side, which refers to ox, which is one of the meanings of the letter Aleph. As opposed to a job, you are you know, you, you're responding to how you're feeling that, or thinking that day. Um, so there's no repetition, which, which is very important, especially in this clone-like world, uh, this digital world of noughts and ones, where you just have these um, bivalent opposites. 
there's something in between. Between naught and one is is perhaps infinite. How do you get from one number to the next? Doesn't it just go on infinitely between numbers? Um, and then, you know, if that's the case, then is there space for um, a, a deeper revelation through art? Because you, you're in that in-between space, because you, you're not repeating or you're not at the behest of somebody else telling you what to do, which is the freedom of art. Jewish cemetery in Prague was founded in the early 15th century on the western edge of the Jewish ghetto. The historical significance of the cemetery lies in both the tombstone inscriptions which hold an important record of the Prague Jews and in the number of luminaries buried there. The old cemetery we have some very interesting phenomena. First of all, we see the black stones on one hand, and on the other hand, the stones which are not black. We can say almost as a rule that the black stones age to about 400 years, and the others to 300 years. Those of 200 or 250 years we hardly see, because we don't bury there more than 220 years. The cemetery itself is more than 400 years old. It's even five and 600 years old, but many of those stones don't exist anymore, but here and there we can see some of them. As it is prohibited to disturb old Jewish graves under religious custom, it was necessary to add further layers of earth for subsequent burials, while existing tombstones were raised to the surface. In time, this produced an accumulation of densely packed tombstones from various centuries, leaning one upon the other, meaning that at most grave sites, one can find up to six graves, all buried one on top of the other. Each century had its own uniqueness to the gravestones. From the 15th and 16th century, Tombstones are characterized by Hebrew inscriptions deeply carved into black rectangular sandstone blocks. For example, the Prague rabbi and poet, Avigdor Kara. This is uh, one of the oldest stones which we have here, but the original was moved to the synagogue of the Meisel synagogue. And this is a copy which was done still in the communist time in 1981. The name of the rabbi is Avigdor Kara, and you see that he died in 1439. And here it's written that he was a very uh, scholar person, that he wrote a po poetry, piyotim, shir yedidim, lomed Torah im rabim v'im yechidim, which means he was spreading Torah. The oldest Jewish tombstones from the 14th century were removed from a medieval burial site that had to be abandoned, and the fragments were embedded in a memorial by the eastern facade of the Clausen Synagogue. From the late 16th century, tombstones became adorned with various symbols and signs. We don't have surnames in those days. We have usually nicknames, according to the place where you come from, according to your the profession of yourself, of, of your grandfather. So we see that one of the very famous students of Rabbi Lev, of Maharal, Rabbi Yudha Lev, and his name was David Gans. He was a great astronomer, and he wrote the first important book of history of his period and the period before. When Mashiach comes and wake them up and tell them, go up from your graves and go to Israel, he will not have to see what is the name. He will just see a Magen David, a star of David. So he will know, David, guns, wake up, because he sees on the stone the David and the little bird, which is guns. This is a stone of a very important person. And 
ארץ לפונטמן הקדוש, הכהן הגדול, מרנה ורבנה. עיר, ברית, the holy one. holy in Judaism we only say when he was killed because he was Jew. This specific one was a great Kohen. Of course, we don't mean the Kohen Gadol of the Temple times. And he was our rabbi and our teacher. And then it's written, El Nekamot Yikach Mehem Nekama. The God of revenge will take revenge from them. It's not written who they are. But if you understand the hints, you know what happened. The names of the dead are most often symbolized by images of animals. The most frequently depicted include the lion, deer, wolf, and mouse. Today, the cemetery contains almost 12,000 tombstones, spanning from 1439 to 1787. The actual number of burials held here during these 350 years, however, is much greater for countless tombstones either sank into the ground or were destroyed during the course of time. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for being with us. And remember that you can find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions Network. As always, from me, Nikki, and the team, shalom and have a safe and peaceful week.